Bonjour, mes amis. Hello, my friends. How are you? Comment ça va? I'm so happy to see you again. Welcome back to Casa Art Class. Our lesson today is called My Patterns Feel Like Art. For today's lesson, you will need graphite pencils, an eraser, drawing or printer paper, wax crayons, and colored pencils. Today's lesson is about visual texture. An artist will look at a physical texture like this stone wall and see which lines, shapes, and colors keep repeating to produce the pattern that makes the texture. Then they'll be able to create the visual texture that represents the texture they want to make. This is Water Lilies, a painting by Claude Monet made out of oil paint on canvas back in 1906. Can you find a leafy visual texture? What about a wet visual texture? Now Manet used the physical texture of the paint to create the illusion of the leafy te visual texture of the lily pads and lilies by leaving thicker blotches of the oil paint. Manet left smooth, thin paint with fuzzy edges to make everything around the lilies and lily pads look like a reflection in the water. Our project today is called My Rhino's Feelings. Let's start by drawing the geometric structure of the rhino. We're going to start with what I call the broken box structure for the rhino's body. Now this is a rectangle, but someone sat on it. That means it has a bend in the top and the bottom. The bend in the top shows where the back ends and the bottom of the rhino begins. The bend on the bottom represents where the belly of the rhino hangs down. Now for the head, we're gonna do a rectangle, but where the rhino's nose is, that's going to be a much shorter side. It's gonna be a much taller side where the neck connects. Make sure to connect the neck to the top and bottom of the broken box. Let's draw some triangles for the horns of the rhino. And draw an oval shape for the ear. A small circle for the eye. Now look at how the eye is close to those horns and an oval shape for the nostril. Now, when I looked at the rhino, I noticed he has this very large piece of skin that is almost like a piece of armor. So we're gonna give this a shape. It's kind of like a rounded triangle. It's very big and it overlaps the front leg. Now let's add the rest of the front leg underneath with a rectangle. You can make it get thinner as it goes to the bottom. Add a triangular shape for the foot. Now for the back leg, I noticed there's also a big armor type shape going over the back leg as well. But this one is actually an upside down version of the other one. So the triangle points down. Now the back leg also has two rectangles making the rest of the leg itself. So make sure to add both of these rectangles. And then you can add a rectangle to make the foot. Now I connected the back of the broken box to the top of the back leg. 
to finish off the rhino's shape, and I attached a little tail here as well. Now all that's left is to add the parts of the rhino that are being overlapped by his body. So there's the other ear, there's the other front leg, and the other back leg. Now I want you to draw these the same as you did the others, but let's tuck them in behind the first ones and make them a little smaller. So use the same structures, but make it smaller and let the front ones overlap. Now that you're done your structure, you can add the details. But I noticed one thing. The rhino also has a really big belly and that belly actually overlaps the back legs. This is different than any other animal. So I made the belly overlap the back leg. Once I was done with that, I decided I had too many lines. So I took my eraser and erased the lines that I didn't need anymore. The structure that doesn't actually belong to the rhino anymore or has been overlapped by other parts. So some in the back leg, parts of the back leg that were overlapped by the belly, parts of the body that were overlapped by that big armor piece in the front leg, and some lines that don't belong in the, in the neck and head because it's all connected together. Now I've started adding some of those details. So I added some shapes to define the nose and the mouth. And then I wanted to add some wrinkles where the neck connects to the head. Now I noticed that I forgot to erase a few lines in the legs. You can erase those as well if you'd like. Once you're done drawing your rhino, let's start adding some texture. Now you're going to do a different texture for the different parts of the body. Choose any colors you'd like, as many as you'd like, and I'd like you to draw a tight squiggly line pattern on the angle of the head. So choose the same angle as the head is on. Okay, so avoid the eyes, the nostril, and the ear, and make sure the squiggly lines are each a little different and make sure you draw them close together. On the front part of the body, let's choose some new colors and we're gonna do a texture with flat ovals. Now you make sure that the ovals touch and they cover the entire front part of the body. So that's that big rounded triangular sh armor shape that we did that overlaps the front legs. Fill the entire shape. Now let's choose some new colors and you're going to do a upside down bumpy line pattern for the front legs. For this one you need to make sure that the bumpy lines touch each other but they cannot overlap. You don't want any of these lines and shapes overlapping each other. Do one leg at a time. For the rest of the rhino's body, you're gonna pick new colors once again. And this time we're going to do a pattern of flat rectangles. So you're gonna make sure that these shapes touch. Now they can be smaller or bigger as long as they're flat. That means they are wider than they are tall. Fill the entire rest of the body. Notice how I made some big ones here.
This is a great pattern for creating stone walls. Now for the back legs, we're gonna choose some new colors again, and you're gonna make a pattern of tall rectangles. So this time, this time they're going to be taller than they are wide. I want you to cover the entire legs, and once again, you're going to make sure that you do one leg at a time. This is like coloring. You wanna do it all the way to the edge of your line. Make sure you don't go past your line. This is a texture that I like to use to do tree bark. Once you're finished, take a gray coloring pencil and color your entire rhino. Stay inside your lines, but go right over your patterns, right over your textures. This will make sure that the rhino looks like he belongs together. Now with your black pencil, you can redraw all the lines that actually belong to your rhino. I also colored in the nostril and eye for this. Remember, don't draw a line unless it actually belongs to your rhino. If you don't think it belongs to your rhino, then leave it out. Once you're finished, sign your work. Thank you, my friends, for joining Casa Art Class. Merci beaucoup. I hope you had fun. Remember to take care of yourselves and your family. I will see you next week. Au revoir.